in this video I'm using a LM2596 DC to DC step down buck converter power module to make a simple but very useful test power supply this is the DC to DC buck converter you put this is in this is out the input voltage is from 3 volts to 40 volts the output voltage is from 1.3 to 35 volts it has a light indicator here when you turn this spot whatever voltage you have here whether it's 19 12 24 you turn this spot to get the desired voltage you need here now i take this little converter and i put it into this box i opened it already I took all the screws this is what it looks like I have a heat sink here a heat sink on the other side what I did or the process I went through Two clips that's the input I put these two clips attach a wire it mark plus and minus which is in and out I use this port in place of this and a small LED and a meter you connect your wires here there here and there you place your meter your port sorry in the box with your banana clips the port is here i didn't take this out but I turned it to zero now because of this small solder here if you taking that out put some solder onto it first and then resolve and desolder it using a flat screwdriver or something to Fry it while you heat it up and then you clean it and put the solder on if you try taking it out just like that desoldering it that way you will damage it like I did 
like I did this one. So you have to be very, very careful. Either you leave it on or you take it out. And then you would place the wires in the orientation. You put them center to center. When you place that into here, you would turn it to see if the orientation you want is right. For instance, if you turn left, left supposed to be off. If you turn right, you're supposed to increase. I say off because we're looking at a, a volume knob, but it's not. This is not a volume knob. When you turn left, you decrease. When you turn right you increase the voltage i purchased these heat sinks i place one heat sink if you notice you can see some holes right here i place one heat sink right here and i place the other heat sink right here using this is a thermal tip using this i place one here and the other one here without the heat sink and you're using that for a period of time let's say about uh, three minutes it depends on what voltage if you have high voltage on the output that will get very very hot so you need to put a heat sink on it now if it do get hot which means your voltage will drop so if you know you're using let's say 1.5 i won't even say it up to 5 volts but 1.5 to 4 volts it's okay it will take some time before it heat up but if you have to go above put a heat sink on this and put another one here now you don't have to put one of these heat sinks you could if you have old computers lying around you could use one of these cut it and put it here just make sure it doesn't touch any of these contacts you put a heat sink there and you cut you could use the line as a gauge and cut and place your heat sink on top that one then you put your meter you could either put one or two meters you could connect one to your input so you would know the input voltage whatever input voltage you're putting in you could connect one to your output i have one 
because uh, the power supply I'm using it has a meter now this meter is a two wire meter which means it will not go down to 1.5 it would stop at um, four four five volts and then it would cut off but it's always wise to use a multi-purpose meter if you have to buy one of these meters for adjustable current get the free wire meter now i bought a free wire meter they said it's from zero to to 40 and it's just like this it's not zero to 40. you know that's the thing i i'll be doing a video on the meter later that's the thing when buying things what you read is not always what you get now let me put some voltage in this this is it when you turn you see from from five but it still has power in it no this is the other meter i bought i took this for lower voltage but it's not starting at zero it's same thing with that one and if i tested that at the time i purchased it i would call amazon and let them know about the meter this is one of the the meter that's in there it has a trim port here that's for calibration to calibrate the meter you're putting it together with your if you have a good multi-purpose meter you put it together with that and you turn this port to sync it with your multi-purpose meter sometimes some of these meters are accurate some of them are way off now <clears throat> When you turn, if you notice that light here is that light right here. I soldered a wire here and there. If, if I don't know if you can see that, but you could see plus there so that's the plus for the light that is the minus so i soldered a wire right here and here 
so I would get the function of this light. This is a 12 volt bulb. It looks like the bulb is not working. You see right now it's at one point three, but the meter isn't showing anything. The light is off, that means it's on a low voltage. Now you increase in. you can see the movement of the meter and the light start coming on I have five seven there I have five 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 six on the multipurpose meter because I put in 12 volts in I will not get 12 volts out I'm getting 11.5 this have 11.6 to do your test power supply I call it a test power supply because of the LM2596 chip gets very very hot you cannot you cannot I cannot stress on that more use it for constant current they say it's two to three volt max three amps sorry but don't look for three amps on it um your working range would be from uh, 1.5 to 2 this is it if you find this video was helpful please like subscribe click on the bell icon to be notified everything i use in the video i'll be putting it in the description below thank you